Good morning, beloved. Peace be with you. Today in our in the first reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, we're in chapter 8, and uh, Paul is reminding us of the, the, um, the hope that we have, the, the, our salvation, our redemption is, in a, in, um, is like, we have it, but not yet fully, huh? Yes, but not yet fully. So we are saved in hope, he says, uh, and probably part of the reason is so that we don't just get lazy and give up, you know? So like some of those, uh, like the extreme ones who would believe it, once saved, always saved, you know, as if like, oh, I'm saved, so I can just do whatever I want now, because I can't lose my salvation, you know, but Paul's reminding us, no, we're saved in, in hope, we have the first pledges, the first promise of that salvation, the gift of the Holy Spirit in our lives, uh, but that's just the first pledge, that's, we're, not, we're not fully redeemed yet, in fact, today he says, we're not even fully adopted yet, we're still waiting in hope for that fullness of adoption, that fullness of redemption that's to come in the future. And in fact, he says, not only us are waiting for that, but all of creation, the whole world, everything that's, that's created is waiting for redemption. Everything uh, is subject, what he says here, uh, to slavery, to corruption. So this is, um, it's meant to be uh, meant to be a passage full of hope for us. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. So we just have part of the glory of God revealed in us so far. It's got, it can grow in us. But the fullness, he says, um, <clears throat> let's just review the first maybe two, three lines here just to get this message down. Okay, so he says, all of creation is waiting with eager expectation for the revelation of the children of God. So we're waiting for that too, huh? To be revealed fully as God's children. We know that we are God's children, but when will we be? When will it be revealed or unveiled that we that we are God's children in its fullness when Christ comes back the second time? Because as Paul says in another letter, when we see when He comes back and we see Him as He truly is, then we will see ourselves as we truly are, because we will see ourselves in Him. So we're waiting for this full revelation, a full unveiling of the children of God. For he says, creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it. In hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. So creation itself is slaved to corruption just like our mortal bodies are so we know our spirits our souls uh, experience already a refreshing redemption you could say uh, but we're waiting for our bodies to kind of catch up to that so our souls are immortal mortal they won't change but our bodies still need to change and be transfigured in the glory of christ like at the transfiguration of christ so when is uh, in the world itself all of creation is subject to slavery to corruption just like our bodies we're getting older they're decaying the hair is falling out the muscles aren't as strong you know you work work out it takes you a little longer to recover than usual the older you get you know our bodies are still subject to a slavery to corruption they are and so is all of creation the whole world so uh, what this, if we, and when did this happen? When did this first start? This subject to slavery, to corruption. Adam and Eve, the very first, this is consequences from the first and original sin. So those consequences from, from sin. The consequences of sin uh, are broken relationships, us with ourselves, us, us with God, us with each other, us with all of creation, the world, the animals, all of those four relationships are broken. And so all of creation is subject to a slavery, to corruption. It's part of consequences of sin. So, you know, sorry to say, and not to pick on them, pick on people, but, you know, no matter how many, how much Green New Deal we get, no matter how much we recycle, no matter how much we try to save the world and the earth, we can't save the earth. No program, no process, nothing we put in place is going to save the earth. We can't preserve it, no matter how green you want to get. It's not going to help. It is subject to slavery, to corruption, until Christ comes again and resurrection happens. 
when our bodies are freed from slavery to corruption at the resurrection of our bodies, so will the earth. That's why Jesus says, when, at that time, when that happens, in a sense, the, the heavens and the earth will go through a death and a resurrection because the heavens and the earth as we know them will pass away and there'll be a new heavens and a new earth, just like we're getting new bodies. Until that time, Paul says, we're basically just all groaning, <laughs> waiting for the redemption of our bodies and all of creation. If we, so in a sense, it's okay to try to treat creation with dignity and respect because it's creation. God made it. It's a good thing. But to revolve our life around that, you know, where we become an advocate for creation more than we're an advocate for Christ, that's a sin. That's distraction from our calling. That's not what we were made to do. That's not supposed to be the center of our life. And in fact, the, the more we spend time on that, we're really just treating symptoms because we're never getting to the root cause. Because the root cause of all of corruption in our lives and in the world is sin. It doesn't matter if we treat, pe teach people how to recycle. <laughs> That's not going to do anything. We have to teach people how to repent, how to grow in a real relationship with God. So they'll grow in love with God and be transformed and as we are being transformed, so will the rest of the world. So will the rest of creation. That's if we go back to the root cause. Otherwise, we're just distracted. It's just like the, poor, you know, the people who center their whole life on trying to fix the problem of the poor people. As if we just get enough programs going, somehow we can so solve world hunger, and there'll be no more poverty. And that's not going to ever happen. Because Jesus said, the poor you will have with you always. The poor teach us how to love and give our lives, but there, there's always going to be somebody who's poor and in poverty because we're, the world is subject to corruption. Poverty is another consequence from sin. So these are all good things to want to, to the, the thing is we can't fix them, you know, but we can work to, we can use them to help us grow in a deeper relationship with God, deeper life-giving love with God. But they're always going to be there. We can't fix them. We have to come back to the root cause, our broken relationship with God, which starts um, being healed by repentance forgiveness of sins, turning our life back to God and living our life more for God. Just as you and I can experience tastes of the glory of God, even now as we grow in deeper relationship with him, so can the earth. So can the rest of creation. Because God consecrates places. You know? You can come into a physical place and there can be healing in that place, huh? Hence some of our apparitions, Lord's, Medjugorje, Fatima, these are like consecrated holy spaces where those places don't necessarily increase corruption, but they actually increase God's healing power there. And so that's just, those are tastes for us of the new heavens, of the new earth, tastes for us of redemption. But again, so Paul is <clears throat> sharing all this as a message for hope. Don't get distracted trying to fix all of these things that are corrupted in the world. We can't fix them. We're all waiting with, and groaning with eager expectation for the revelation of the sons of God that will come and happen when Jesus comes again a second time. Guess what? Even those who have died, even the canonized saints in heaven are still waiting, groaning. They don't have redempted bodies yet, right? We're all waiting for the resurrection. So they're waiting with us, still groaning in a sense, helping us until that time comes. So Father, we just want to thank you for this message of hope that you give us that no matter what sufferings we go through in this world, no matter what 
Uh, no matter what corruption we endure, we know that this present time is nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed in us if we just stay steady and persevere on your way of life that leads us to eternal life. So we pray today that you would just impart to us uh, more divine strength, more hope, more love, Lord, to just urge us on this path, fo this path following you. And we pray that you, this message of hope would just uh, release some freedom inside of us and peace as well. We pray these things together in Jesus' name, amen.